Hi everyone, in this video, you all are going to understand the different types of variables and what a variable scope and how to use them. In C++, there are nine basic data types. One, integers. These are primary data types for storing numbers. Two, long. These are variable data type that has an extended size for storing numbers. Double data type are storing floating points. That means numbers with decimal points on them. Double stores limited number of decimal values. Float data types are storing float numbers or decimal numbers. And float has high amount of float floating values or space to store float values. Try is data type to store characters or a value. Characters literally are written in single quotes like A, Six, string is a data type that stores a string of characters. Variable. A variable is a way of naming and storing a value for later use by the program. Let's take a look at this particular example. The family is planning a trip and you were given three boxes, which was in three different colors, blue, red, and brown, to put specific items in each of these boxes. The first box, which was the blue box, you decided to put your clothes. Second box, which was the red box, was for your toys. And then the last box, which was the third brown box, was for your shoes. And to identify each of these boxes and its item, you simply use the color of the boxes. The boxes serve as the variable. The items in the boxes serve as the value or the contents of the variable, while the color of the boxes is the variable name for identification. Just like the example, variables are used to carry data from one part of the program to the other part of the program. The content of a variable can change. However, the identity or name of the variable remains the same in the program. We want to take a look at some variable terms. One, variable declaration. Before they are used, all variables have to be declared. Declaring a variable means defining its type and optionally setting an initial value. Variables do not have to be initialized immediately they are declared, but it may often be useful. Examples of declaring a variable. We come into the Tinkercad workspace, then we click on create new circuit to start programming. Now we drag out the Arduino Uno R3 to the workspace. Then you simply click on code and click on your blocks. Then let's select text. Then click OK. All right, we're on blocks. It's time to remove all the content inside the void setup and the void loop, respectively, because we'll be making use of those. Here will be a particular example of how to declare a variable. First, you have to put in the data type of the variable and then put in the variable name. Then you end it with a semicolon. So this is how to declare a basic variable in Arduino. First, the int, which is for integers, which is the type of variables you want to create. And the next is the name of the variable. They will close the statement with a semicolon. We just created a variable, but we have not given the variable any value, which means this variable is empty, or we just created an empty box of numbers. Next, variable initialization. Initializing variables. Variables may be initialized or assigned a value when they are declared. It is always good programming practice, however, to double check that a variable has valid data in it before it is assessed for some other purposes. Here is a particular example of variable initialization. 
So we just come down here, we type in the data type. Next, we type in the name of our variable. Now we give an equal to sign. We give an equal to sign, then give the value of the variable and then end it a semicolon. The assembly operator tells the program to store whatever value is on the right side of the equal sign into the variable on the left side. How to name a variable? You can give a variable any name as long as it sticks to the rules set out when naming variable. It is best to give variable meaningful names that help you and other understand the function of the variable better. Variables consist of both uppercase and lowercase letters. Variables can contain numbers, but variables cannot start with a number. Variables may not have the same names as Arduino language keywords or C++ keywords. For example, you cannot have a variable named float. Variable must have unique names. For example, you cannot have two variables with the same name in a particular program. This will instantly create an error in your code. Variable names are case sensitive. So count and count, these two variables are different from each other because of the capital letter. Variables may not contain any special characters except the underscore. Next, data type. A data type is a classification of data which tells the compiler or the interpreter how the programmer or you programming the computer, how you intend to use this data. There are two types of data types. One, the primitive data type which is a fundamental data type that cannot be broken down into more simpler data types. These data types are predefined by the programming language. They come automatically on your programming language. Non-primitive data types are directly opposite. They are created by the programmer and it is not defined by the programming language. Here are some primitive data types in C++. One, INT, which is referred to as a primary data type for storing number, which can store values from minus 32,000 to plus 32,000. Here is a simple example of the int data type. First, we type in the int keyword, which signifies integer. Then you write the variable name, which will be current cash. We set a value to the variable by simply putting the equal to sign and then typing the value, which is 12, and then end the statement to semicolon. So we have just simply created a variable with an integer data type, which means this variable can only store integer values. So this variable stores the current cash I have currently, which is $12. To do other complicated operations with the variable, simply come to the first setup. Here, I just simply created a communication portal between the Arduino and the computer. So next, we'll print out the data that is currently in the variable. Though not to worry too much about what I just typed here, you're not going to be using it for now, but you understand it later in the course. So in order to assess the value from a variable, you simply type in the variable name so you can assess whatever value is stored in that variable. Now we start the simulation. Then Check our serial monitor, you're going to find the value of our variable, which is 12. You just simply type in the name of the variable inside this 
brackets and then it's generated the current value of the variable. The next data type, which is the long data type. Long variables are extended size variables for storing numbers. And it can store integer values from minus 2.1 billion to plus 2.1 billion. Here is a particular example. So you simply type in the keyword long and then type in the name of the variable, which will be speed of light. Then we give the value of our variable the speed of light, which is approximately 300 million. Then we end the statement with a semicolon. So next, inside the voice setup, I simply call the name of our variable the same way it was typed there. That's the same way I have to type it here. So like we said, the variable naming structure is case sensitive. So we click, simply click on start simulation. And if you come to the serial monitor, you discover that it's displaying the current value, which is on our variable, which is 300 million. So the next data structure, which will be floats. Float data types are used to store floaty point numbers. Floaty point numbers are numbers that have decimal points. Here is a particular example. You simply type in the name of the keyword, which is float, then the variable name, which will be pi value. Then we initialize a value of pi, which is about 3.141592. Pi has a very long amount of data, so we just approximated it to these short decimal fractions. Now we end the statement with a semicolon. Then we quickly type in the same variable names inside this bracket of the printing function. So you simply click on start simulation. On the serial monitor, you discover that between 3.14, it simply approximated that value into something small where it can be stored on the float data type. Next, double is a data type that stores float numbers, but float data types are more widely used. But this is exactly how to write a double data type. You simply type in the data structure double, then the name of your variable half. Next, you put an equal to sign. Now you type in the floating point number you want to store. I'm going to store 1.5, which is half. Then type in the same variable name inside the printing bracket function. Simply click on start simulation. Now, if you check your, your serial monitor terminal, you discover it's showing 1.50. So it added a bit of zero at the front of your 40 point numbers because double on a standard can store two decimal points values. Next, we build a bool. A bool holds one of two values, either true or false. Each bool values or each bool variables occupies one bit of memory at a time. Here is a particular example of how to use bool data structure. You simply type in the data structure bool. Always note that the name of your data structure will always change color to signify that you are just typing a primitive data type. So bool, which is the name of the data type, then the name of our variable, which is, is raining. Now we can initialize either true or false. So currently it is false. Next, I just type in the same name of the variable inside 
the printing function. Now, you simply click on start simulation. No worry too much about the grammar. I just want to display um, the information properly. So inside the serial monitor, you will discover it's displaying zero. Well, the computer basically understands zeros and ones. So when you're using a serial monitor, it displays only numbers it can also understand, mostly numerical values. So here it's displaying zero, which stands for false. And then let's try to change the value to true. And note that the initial letter, either from the true or false, they are both small letters. So all your um, words should be on small letters. So next, click on Start Simulation. OK, now if you discover it is now 1 because it's true. So true is 1, and then false is 0. Next, array. An array is a collection of variables of the same data type that are assessed with an index number, which means the value in an array are numbered from 0 instead of from 1. Array in C++ can be very complicated, but using simple arrays is relatively straightforward. Here is a particular example. You simply put in the data type of arrays you want to store, then type in the name of the variable. Now, you put in a curly brace, Next, you put in square bracket. Then you give an equal to to assign a value to that variable. Next, after the equal to, you simply fix in your curly bracket and type in the array of numbers you want to store. So I'm going to put in two. Then end the statement with a semicolon. If you see here, we first of all type in the data type we want to store our array, which is an integer. Then next is the data type, which is my pin. Then we open and close a square bracket. Then we give an equal to to assign our value. So the other side of equal to, we opened a curly brace where we type in the array of integer values we want to store. Next, I'm going to show you another way of fighting or declaring your array. You, put, you first of all type the data structure you want to use, which I'm going to use float. Then the name of my variable, which is my val. Then open and close a square bracket. Then put a number inside. So after the equal to, you put in your square bracket and then type in the floating point numbers you want to store. Then you end the statement with a semicolon. Here, what we simply did is now we first of all created the data type. So we first of all, type in our data type, which is float. Next, we type in the name of our variable, which is my val. Then inside the square bracket, we simply put in the value or the maximum characters our array can carry. So our array can only carry um anything less than six characters or six characters so anything more than that it will give you an error so we give an equal to, to assign our array values we put in our square brackets then we type in the array values we differentiate these values by using a comma so next inside um the printly function we're going to type in two ways of assessing the values from our arrays. What we simply did here was that inside the printing function, we type in the name of our array, the first one being my pin, and then we type in four. We just specify the value we want to display on the the array we want to display the fourth value on our array. So for the second val variable, which is my var, 
we now specified the number of value we want to put in our variable, which would be five, which would be the fifth value inside the array. So we simply click on start simulation. So for the first one, which for the first value, which is my pin, we said we want to print out the fourth value inside the array variable. So inside our array variable, you see, if you can count, we added five values to our array variable. So if you start counting from zero, you see zero will be two, one will be four, two will be five, three will be seven, and four is going to be nine. So if you look at our serial monitor, it printed nine because nine is the fourth value inside the variable. Next, for our myVal, we said we type in five because we wanted to print the fifth character or the fifth value of the array. So if you look at the serial monitor, it's printing 0, 0.00. That means it has no fifth value, okay? So we're gonna type in the correct amount of value inside the um, myVal variable name. Now we simply click on start simulation. Okay, if you see um, serial monitor, now our myVal is printing zero point, is printing 2.40 because zero is the index is where the variable or the array starts counting from. So zero, which is 2.4, one, which is 5.6, and two, which is 5.7. So we said we wanted to print the zero element on the value, which is 2.4. So let's recall, if you look at the array variables we created, an array of int only stores an array of integer values, and an array of floats only stores an array of floats values. If you type any other values that are not specific to that data type, it is going to give you an error. Arrays are often manipulated inside a loop statement. Next is the char data type. Char is a data type used to store a character value. Characters literally are written in single quotes. Characters are stored as number. However, you can see the specific encoding for each character in the ASCII encoding format. An example of char is simply typing the name of the data type, which is char, and then the name of your variable which will be my char or my character. Then give an equal to, to assign a value. You just put in single quotes. And then in between those two single quotes, you type in the characters you want to display. Then you close the statement with a semicolon. So here's another way of typing a char variable you simply type in the, the data type char then you type in your variable name which mine will be my char one then you want equal to to assign a value so instead of using a as my character i can simply type in the echo the encoding for a which is 65 according to ASCII, which is A S C double I. I think this stands for American Standard Code um, International Instructions or something like that. So in there, you see different encoding responsible for each characters. This encoding I use in a computer to understand the character in computer. So in in numerical value so the computer can actually understand what is being typed. Next, inside the print statement, I simply call in the name of my variable, which is my char. 
and then the next variable which i created which is my chart one you have to type in the name the exact way you typed it when you declared your variable next you simply click on start simulation Now, if you look at my serial monitor, you discover that you see two A's. This first A, because that is the um, particular characters we put when we created the variable at the top. Then the second, which is my chart two, which I told you is the ASCII code for the character A. And when we called in a variable, it displayed that character A. So that's all for char. So next, string. String are data type that stores a combination of different characters. String are always defined inside a double quote, while characters are always defined inside a single quote. An example of a string is char, which is the data type, then the variable name, which is string for. Next, you put in your square brackets which signifies a array variable next you put in your equal to to assign a value now you put in a double quote then type in the name or whatever characters you want to display or you want to store inside that particular variable this isn't the standard way of creating string variables in c plus plus but this is the easiest way to do so in Arduino. Next, variable scope. Another important choice that programmer face in face is where to declare variable. The specific place that variables are declared influences how various functions in the program we see the variable. Variables in C++ programming language, which Arduino uses, has a property called scope. First, a global variable scope is one that can be seen by every function in the program, while local variable scope are only visible to function in which they are declared. Here is a simple analogy. Take for instance, you are a class president or a class captain in your classroom. Your level of authority and control doesn't leave the classroom and you can only take care of issues inside the classroom. Your current power doesn't include other classrooms in the school. So this means you are the local authority for that particular classroom. That's for local variable. Next, if your dad happens to be the principal of the school, then he has the authority and control over the entire issues concerning the school. This power and authority is not limited in certain areas in the school, unlike the class president. So this is a particular example of global variable scope. Here is how variable scope are typed in Arduino. Variables declared outside a function, for example, void setup and void loop, or etc., is a global variable. To create a global variable, you have to type in the variable or declare the variable outside any function, just as we said. So simply creating a variable outside these two functions. So we just created a global variable named read and the data type, which is integers and the value, which is one, two, and three. Now, inside the printlink function, you simply can call the variable name because it's a global variable and it can be accessed by every function. So simply calling the name of this variable inside this void setup can call whatever value is being stored inside the variable. So, Whenever I click on start simulation, on your serial monitor, you will discover that the value of the variable is displayed. So this has been the examples we've been using when we've been typing all our variables.
Next, local variable. For local variable, they are actually defined inside a function. So, so create a variable called with a data type of float and the name will be so we the equal to is going to assign a value of 3.5 and then you close the statement with a semicolon next type in a function serial dot print to display values from our variable now i simply type in the name of I simply type in the name of the variable inside um, the printing brackets. So check your serial monitor. You find out that the first value, which is the value of our global variable read, is one, two, three. And then the next value, which is the value of our local variable val, which is stored as 3.5. So we're going to try in something that we produce an error in our program when we try to call the local variable inside another function. So to simply do that, we come over inside the void loop and then type in serial serial.printlin to create a new line and end it to semicolon. So inside the brackets, you simply type in the name of the local variable you created inside the voice setup, which is val. So when you click on start simulation, you discover that there's an error on your code. It didn't run. So down here, it will simply tell you error, val was not declared in this scope. That means val cannot be accessed here because it wasn't declared, declared inside this variable and it wasn't also declared outside the variable, which makes it a global variable. So it cannot be accessed. So for, for now, we will type in the name of a global variable, which we used, and the name of our global variable is read. So next, you click on Start Simulation. Now it's won perfectly. There was no errors. You click on Start Simulation. It just keeps printing the um, read value. Like you said before, void loop just keep running your program repeatedly. So whatever functions or whatever codes you type inside the void loop just runs repeatedly. So it will just keep printing out the value inside the read variable. Order of mathematical operations. Let's understand the order of operations considered by the Arduino while performing calculations. I believe you all might be familiar with board mass when you start learning mathematics. The computer has a sequence of operations which it recognizes first and the one it recognizes last. So we're going to look into this now. Here is a quick example. We simply create a global variable top with data type of int and the name of our variable in order. Open up equal to then type in a series of mathematical expression. Here is a simple mathematical expression. Then we'll see the order at which it gets calculated. So inside the printing function, I just type in the name of my variable and then click on start simulation. Okay, so we open our serial monitor and the result of our calculation is six. So now I'm going to break down our calculation into steps. The first step of every um, order of preference order of calculation is that the first calculation that gets done is the calculation done inside the parentheses or inside the brackets. 
first our calculation is going to go 2 plus 1 and 2 plus 1 being 3. Then the next calculation is going to be 2 multiplied by 3. And 2 multiplied by 3 will give us 6. Then the next order of calculation will be the division. So it's going to say 6 divided by 3. And that will be a result of 2. Then it's now going to do the last one, which is the addition. And then it's going to be 2 plus 4 and it will result to 6. So that's why we're pointing out our, our result to be 6 on the serial monitor. So like I said, the order of operation will be first, the parenthesis, second, multiplication, division, and modulo. Then the third and the last one will be addition and subtraction. If there are multiple operations next to each other, they will be computed from left to right. For you to understand the other types of operators, you will need to look into conditional statements. <laughs> Tchau.